Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and this session is called What's New in Visual Studio 2019. Specifically, we're talking about version 16.9, which is generally available today, or if you live in the future, it was available yesterday. So make sure that you're up to date. You need to go and run the Visual Studio installer. If you've already got Visual Studio 2019 installed, it's a quick update, and you'll get a bunch of cool features. Now, if you wanna see all the features about what's going on in Visual Studio 2019, you can go and take a look at the blog post. The blog post will have all the releases, all the little details from tiny bug fixes to major features. Now in this talk, I've only got enough time to show you some of my favorite things. So I'm gonna focus on the things that make me productive and happy, and hopefully they will make you productive and happy as well. So the things that I wanna focus on are uh, the improved Git workflow. Now I have in the historically been a person that did Git from the command line, and I stayed away from UIs that managed Git. But the new Git in uh, Visual Studio 2019 16.9 is much less intimidating, and I'm spending more and more time next to my code, doing my Git in my code, and switching away to the command line a lot less, which is really, really nice. So that's all new in this version of 2019. The next one is um, updated and improved CI CD, continuous integration, continuous deployment actions for GitHub actions. And this is to deploy your stuff up to Azure. So you're doing your work in Git already. And if you haven't, I would encourage you to get involved because Git is amazing. And then I deploy it by pushing that code up to GitHub. Then GitHub actions kicks off the publish process. It actually builds and then publishes over to, to uh, Azure, so we're gonna show that as well. And then, because I am using Azure, I'm using Linux, which is the what uh, my preferred operating system in Azure is, I want my local system to reflect what's happening in the cloud. Now, I'm using Windows 10, which is the operating system that makes me happy. I don't wanna run it on Windows and then have it run differently, maybe up in Linux in the cloud, so I use WSL2, the Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'm running Linux, real Linux on Windows, but I'm using Visual Studio 2019. And of course now I can actually press F5 and debug into Linux, which is pretty amazing. So I'm on Windows, running Linux, deploying to Linux, and I'm very seamlessly moving back and forth between uh, my desktop development environment and up in the cloud. And I'm doing that all from Visual Studio 2019, which is pretty fantastic. So far we've been in PowerPoint, we're gonna get out of PowerPoint and we're gonna spend our time inside of Visual Studio because Visual Studio is where you want us to be. Look, I'm inside Visual Studio. Ah, sorry, I just thought that was cool. See, Visual Studio is right here. All right, cool. Here's Visual Studio. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, found new project. Now you see, I did that from inside Visual Studio. I can also, if I want, just run Visual Studio and immediately I get that new dialog box. This is great. From here, I can actually clone a repository, open a local folder. Let's me get to my code really, really fast. I'm going to say create a new project. Now, uh, I've been asked to basically make an API and we're going to deploy it to the cloud. And I've got my colleagues over on Power Platform that are going to be consuming this, uh, this data. And these ASP.NET Core web APIs are really optimized to do that. So I'm going to click on the ASP.NET Core web API. And then I will name it the very descriptive Web API 9. Everyone's going to know what it means. Now take a look at this. I can pick my target framework. Now right now .NET 5 is released. So definitely check that out. And I'm going to click Enable Docker using Linux. Although I could also just use WSL on the open metal. And then I'm going to click Open API Support. Open API Support is gonna give me that, that definition language, that web services definition language that's gonna allow us to have this RESTful service, uh, have a nice UI with a thing called Swashbuckle. Open API is wonderful and it allows us to consume that API and that's gonna make it easier for our friends that are doing that work on the Power Platform. Okay, so we've just fired up and we've got our basic weather forecast web API. Okay, so right off the bat, I've got that. Now, this is only local at this point, okay? We haven't done anything interesting uh, as far as Git or GitHub, so I need to make sure that I get this stuff up there. Traditionally, what I would end up doing at this point is I would load up Edge, I would go into 
GitHub and I'd make the repository and then I'd have to think about my Git ignore and then I'd have to set up remotes and there'd be this whole dance back and forth. And this is kind of the same thing that I do every time I make a new project. But we say, nay, nay, this is going to be much better now. I'm going to go up here to the actual Git menu. Look at this. There's a dedicated Git menu in Visual Studio. And I'm going to say, create Git repository. So from within VS, I've got my own Git menu. All right, now from here, we can initialize a local GitHub repository, but I'm actually going to go and create one in GitHub, name it, and push it. So we're going to initialize, create, and push all at the same time, which is really cool. So we've actually got this create and push button down here. And you'll notice that I'm actually logged in with my GitHub account, which is lovely. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hit create and push. And that's going to do all that stuff, all that administrivia that I had to do before, which is no fun, because it's going to go and call the GitHub API, create the repository. It's going to take care of the things that I need, like the right Git ignore for Visual Studio. In this case, I'm using .NET and the right Git attributes. I'm going to click over here on Git changes over here down at the corner. We've got the solution explorer and we've got Git changes, and that's where I'm going to spend a lot of my time. Then I'm going to click, and I'm going to click, click View, Git Repository. What we can see is we've got our main branch, and then our local history right there, project files, and Git ignores. That was added by Visual Studio. So Visual Studio actually made those messages. So let's head over to GitHub to prove it. Hit F5. Look at that. Updated two minutes ago. So. Right here, this is our actual application, our Git attributes and our Git ignore that was created by us. And then of course, it's got a remote which has already been configured. So honestly, other than going to GitHub to prove it to myself, I didn't really need to do anything. And even then, I probably could have uh, avoided that as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go and I'll just like, you know, make a change. So if I pop out to let's say uh, my controller here and maybe leave a little note for myself. Notice that I'm also getting that nice Git reference here about when I did that and those changes, that nice little bit of context that you get from Visual Studio. Hey, this is a nice comment. I always move really fast. I'll run over to Git changes. I'll come up here in the corner and I'll say, this is a nice comment. And then I'll go ahead and commit that. And now I've got my commit here. And then I'm like, oh crap. I should have said that here too. I forgot, like I'm just gonna get a commit. Hey, this is another nice comment. Now at this point, I want to amend that commit. This is kind of a very common thing that I would do from the command line, and that can be a little bit confusing, but here it does not need to be confusing. In fact, I can save that. You can see over here, we've got that first commit. If I click amend, modify the latest commit of the current branch, bloop, Look, it brings that hash down. I can amend it. I can even change it. Here's my new changes, and then I'll go and commit that. Now you see I have an outgoing commit and no incomings. Isn't that nice? If I click on that, check this out. I really like this view. Let me zoom in here. Look how nice this is. You've got that nice separation between outgoing and low. So this is my local history. This is on the way out, like an outbox for Git, and then I can push it right there, which is nice. So I can click push, I can click push over there, and then we'll go and initiate that push, and then if we come back over to GitHub, just because I'm still not confident, I wanna see what's really happening. Look at that, 34 seconds ago, there it is. Another nice comment. I can spend my time here, all inside of Visual Studio, which is pretty sweet. So I've gone and I've pushed that. Now, if you look over on the left-hand side here, you see where it says branches. Right now, our main branch there is the only branch, right? Okay, I can go over here and I can say, let's make a new branch, right? Say a new branch and we'll say my new feature. Maybe I'm working on a feature I wanna do and I'm gonna base that on main. I'm gonna check it out all at the same time and I'm gonna hit create here. Now look. We've got a new feature branch based on main. And see how that's, that's changed there? Now, I remember when I said I use uh, the command line. I use it in Windows Terminal. 
but I also know that I can use the developer PowerShell inside of Visual Studio. So down here, I've gone and set up a pretty prompt with Oh My Posh. You can go out there and Google for Hanselman Pretty Prompt, or you can Google with Bing if that makes you happy. And you can see that I've actually, inside of Visual Studio 2019, got that prompt notification. And it's down here too, look at that. It's in the status bar of Visual Studio as well. So this is just really great. You see Git and the branch is all integrated everywhere. So now I can go and make a change to my, my code and we'll do this on a feature branch. Hey, this is a, a new branch and a new day, baby. Okay. We'll click on Git Changes and we'll say, this is some branch work that we're doing. Branch work. Commit, okay? You see that commit right there? That commit is local and we can go and see the difference between our feature branch, see? See that outgoing work? Main is here, our feature branch is there, okay? We'll push this branch, we're pushing up to my new feature, this is an outgoing branch here. Sending this up to GitHub, the remote right there. All right, now look at this. Inside of Visual Studio, inside of Visual Studio, successfully pushed my new feature to origin, I can click create a pull request here. I click on that and look what it does. It takes me right up to GitHub. Isn't that cool? Then I can go here and I can go and say ship it, squirrel. And then we'll ship it directly right here. And then my friends who are on the project can go and merge that in or whatever. So I was able to make a new branch update my local history, and create a pull request on GitHub all from within Visual Studio. And then when I needed to go up to GitHub, it set me up for success by automatically filling out the title of that pull request, and I was all ready to go. And then you can see here, my new feature is slightly ahead of main, and it's just waiting for someone to merge it in, which is pretty sweet. All right, good deal. Very much enjoying the Git changes and Git repository views here in Visual Studio. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to a more sophisticated uh, repository. We're gonna switch over to Recipes API, which is more representative of what I'm gonna put into Azure. It's got a longer and more complicated history here. You can see that Brady was doing some work last year, and there is uh, an interesting branch and then merge. So I get a nice visualization there. I am working on the My Feature branch, and within that, I'm gonna go and make some changes. I'm pretty sure this is my own personal branch, so I should do it just like I did before. I'll come in here and I'll say, make some more comment changes because that's really all I'm good for right now, isn't it? Uh, get my ingredients, they are so yummy. Can I put tacos in? I can, excellent. So now I've got tacos emoji in Visual Studio, doing the real work. Cool, click on get changes. Make a small change, add it a taco. Gonna commit that, and that's gonna become an outgoing commit, okay? So now, I'm just gonna push that. Oh, and look at that. This dialog box just popped up because I made an outgoing commit, and there's in fact incoming stuff. Someone has been messing around in my branch, and their stuff is up in the remote repository. So another person on another branch in a parallel universe has gone and done work in the exact same project. So what's cool about that is that it'd be scary from the command line, but it's actually pretty cool from Visual Studio. I can actually do this, which would be horrible and destroy the universe. You should never do that, unless you really know what you're doing. I'm gonna do a pull and push. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down their stuff, reconcile it, and I'm gonna push it back up into GitHub. So I'm gonna say pull and push. Ooh, look at this, look at this. Pull completed, resolve the conflicts. File contains merge conflicts. I'm gonna open the merge editor. I'm gonna get this nice one, two, three uh, view here, which is kind of cool. So this is a great diff view. You've got your incoming remote on the left where this individual said, get all of my ingredients. You've got mine on the local, which has taco emoji, which is clearly the winner. 
And then at the bottom here, the result, which is like how we merge them together and what we're going to decide. Now, if there were other changes, I could actually go through those changes. I can make decisions like take the incoming, take the current changes, do individual compares, accept the merge as it is. I could also show just the specific words. See this here? The word diff is actually highlighting the words that changed. But we know that this is the winner because this is right. And I'm going to clobber that person's stuff. So I'm going to click the checkbox. Look at that. Now, the tacos are going to be the final result, okay? So that's going to be our, our ending. I'm going to say, I win. Wah ha 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 okay? And we're going to accept that merge. And we're going to commit that. Ah, look at that. See, two outgoing. Because we have to deal with the one that we made as well as that fixed change. And we're going to hit push. Initiate that push and send that up. Again, we're doing this on the My Feature. There we go, look at that. And you can see you get a nice visualization about what was going on there, and it fixed that and cleaned it up. So it looks fantastic. I know exactly what's going on. And you can see also here, I just wanna showcase this. We've got our situation, and I could have squashed that or cleaned it up, but I like it the way it is. Um, we've got, here's where main is, here's the work Taser and I are doing, and then now My Feature is ahead of main, and then we can go and deal with that a little later, but I need to make sure this application runs because with all these comment changes that I've made, who knows if it'll compile, my goodness. All right, let's hit F5 and see if this application runs. So hit F5. Oh, look at that. So in the, at the top here, when I hit F5, I didn't even actually point this out. This is actually so seamless that I've accidentally run it in Linux. Oops, look at this. If I pull this down in Visual Studio here, I've got choices about the different ways that I can run it. I can run it locally on Windows using Kestrel. I can run it in the Snapshot Debugger. I can run it in WSL2, the Windows subsystem for Linux. And right here I can set my browser, uh, which is Edge. So I'm actually, without even realizing it, because I was not looking at my dropdown here, I just hit F5 and I ran it inside of Linux. Now look at this. This is really cool. Inside of Visual Studio 2019, they have handled the mount point. You can see that the mount point there is my D drive. They're running my actual code. They're doing it inside of Linux. And then when we pop up Edge, which is on Windows, localhost 5001 is being port forwarded. So I feel like I'm on localhost because it is my computer, which is really cool. And then we get this lovely Swagger UI. The Swagger UI is a a front-end UI created for our open API web APIs. So I can get my ingredients, I can get my recipes. So I'm gonna click on recipes and get those and hit execute. Oh, looks like we've got an error. This is really cool, by the way, just to point out that I didn't have to go out to any other tools to go and call this. I just did it from the browser. There are other tools that you can use, like the Edge Developer Tools has an API testing tools. You may be familiar with other projects like Postman or Nightingale. Uh, this is all done entirely in HTML and JavaScript. So I was able to go and look at those content response types. And we can see here that we've got the Cosmos connection string is required. So it looks like I've got my local application calling out to Cosmos. That's a service dependency, right? I have a dependency on another service and I haven't set that dependency up. So I'm gonna need to fix that. So let's go ahead and close this here. We'll come back out and we will stop our debugging. Now, ordinarily, the service dependency might be a matter of poking around in JSON files and looking for config here and there and then trying to figure out copy pasting some stuff. But not only am I logged into GitHub, I am also logged into Azure. And I've got this connected services node within my solution explorer. I'm actually going to double click on that. And this is pretty cool. Check this out. Since we have a dependency on another service, those services show up here. And Cosmos DB is a dependency that it knows that I have because I'm making that call out to Cosmos. So I'm going to click Configure here in VS 2019. Again, this is 16.9. And because I'm logged into my account, and you can see I've got my subscription name, check this out. I can go and look for my subscriptions, find the different instances, and that service dependency knows that it must be this database because it's one of the ones in that subscription that's a Cosmos. I'll hit Next. Check this out. 
the connection string name that I need. I believe it is uh, recipes connection string. I don't know how to spell. Can't spell when people are looking at me. Okay, here's our connection string value, and it's going to go and store it for me in my local secrets, Jason. It's going to make sure that I have the right dependencies and make sure that I'm using the right secret store. So that's just one example of a, a service dependency in the, in the form of Cosmos DB. There are other ones. I'll hit finish. Look, adding recipe connection string to local secrets, making sure that I've got the right package and configuring that. Cool. Now that shows up here. There's our connection string name, recipes connection string. You can see down here, it could have been Active Directory or something else as well. And I think we'll see that expand over time. Now let's run this again and see if it works. Fire this up. We've got our Swagger front end on top of our open API. I'm going to say get recipes, click try it out, click execute. You can actually see what's happening in the debug there. And look, there we go. So we've made a local call. We happen to be using Linux and doing this. And then in the back end, we went and we called Cosmos and we got that secret already as well, which is cool. Now that secret there, I put in the local uh, secrets file, but it could have been in Key Vault. Uh, I have a version of this project already deployed up to Azure and my deployment team would have put the secret up there as well. And I can make sure that I'm ready for the recipes connection string up there in, uh, in Azure. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to say publish, which I know many of you have done for many years. One of the most popular things that people do is they publish to a folder and that means getting everything ready for production. But then there's usually another step. And honestly, while that's great for quick prototypes, it is not a good idea to be publishing your stuff directly via whether it be FTP or a folder. Ideally, you want a more mature process and that would allow you to check your code in, have it be tested and then deployed for you. Because remember, the number one tool that we have as developers is automation. And if you do something twice, automate it. But file new project and right-click publish are really neat things. So how can we make it so the stigma around right-click publish goes away? Well, we make it so when you go into a publish, it can be a CICD publish, a continuous integration publish. So I'm going to actually say, I'm going to publish to Azure, publish to Linux. And you notice that I could do virtual machines or containers or whatever. You can see I've got a couple of instances that I can choose from. I'm going to pick this one here. I'll pick next. I had API management APIs. I could go and do that as well. For now, I'll skip that step. I'm going to hit next. And now I've got two choices here. I could go and publish it directly or even better use CI CD. So I'm going to use GitHub Actions workflow. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to click on that. And that is going to make it so when we deploy that application, it will automatically get pushed via that GitHub repo. This is not a traditional push directly to Azure. It's going to push it to GitHub and then GitHub will build it and then push the result to Azure. So it's going to give you that CI CD workflow that you're comfortable with. Uh, and there we go. Look at this. It's already happening. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to come back over here. You can see that that ran inside of GitHub. And now I'm going to come back here. Now hit F5 and it says 404 error. That's because it's a web API and we're not in development mode. So I'm going to write, I'm going to type in slash recipes. And then we're going to go and hit that web API, specifically the recipes endpoint. And it works. We get back JSON. Cool. So what we've done here from Visual Studio is we've taken our recipes API. We've configured a CI CD pipeline entirely from Visual Studio. We've pushed that up using the new Git features in this version of Visual Studio 2019, deployed it to Azure. And now we have a live production web API, which is pretty fantastic. And also we did all that work inside of WSL2 on, on uh, Visual Studio. And actually, just as we get ready to take off and go, my friends, let me just show you that I'm using all of this stuff, stuff myself in the real world. This is actually my own personal podcast website. If you see Hansel Minutes, this is all done, runs inside of WSL2. So I'm just going to hit F5 and run that. And while I'm doing it, I'll actually go and hit the actual live site as well. And you can see at the bottom here, 
powered by .NET 5, deployed from a specific commit. And look, I'm break, I got a breakpoint, so I'm actually doing live interactive debugging on Windows, on Linux, instead of WSL2. And then when I go and I check that code in, of course, it's going to go and run in a GitHub action. Works fantastically. All of this stuff inside of the new Visual Studio update on 2019. Uh, this is Visual Studio 2019 16.9. This is the podcast here. And if I scroll down at the bottom, you can actually see the specific commit right there. Fantastic. Let's remove, let's go back to our slide here and just remind ourselves what we have seen. So Visual Studio 2019 version 16.9, it's time to update. Go and run Visual Studio installer to make sure you've got the latest. There's a ton of new stuff beyond what I've just shown you, but we've got a new improved Git workflows. We've got new support for CI CD uh, actions in uh, GitHub Actions for Azure. And then of course, multiple times I've shown you .NET interactive debugging using Linux on Windows with the Windows subsystem for Linux. So enjoy and make sure that you uh, Go download right here, visualstudio.com slash download. Thank you, friends.